So regardless, if there is seeking, that seeking for whatever it might be, the reason will constantly change, whether it wants truth, healing, more peace, maybe just self-love, enlightenment, whatever it is looking for, then it will color whatever it uses. That which it uses will become good and bad, will be used and the effects will be good and bad because that's life. It's never all just good. It's never all just bad. So when it comes to, this is just a brief overview in a sense, but when it comes to meditation, or spiritual path, or the radical message. All of it has its good and bad. All of it has its so-called purpose and meaning within the story, within the dream. All of it, now it's seen, not visually, but energetically, now it's felt to be all equal. Like none of it is better than anything else. None of it is worse than anything else. So if we're, if we're in the camp of the radical message, then perhaps things like meditation or the spiritual path, just for example, might be rejected. It might be seen as useless or there's no point in it or something like that. Maybe an extreme view is taken on. And if we're on the side of spirituality, then the radical message is perhaps very harmful, that it's completely neglecting the human experience or, it, or the personal experience. And maybe a position like that is taken. So regardless, all of it is just a misconception. All of it is just a position that the person or the seeker is taking. And there's nothing wrong with that. All of that, a lot of that seemed to happen here because the seeking can't help but take positions to see things through the color of its own filter, to see things through its own mental understanding at that particular moment, to see things through perhaps whatever suppressed emotion is arising in that particular moment. So none of that is really a problem. It's just that when we get stuck there for a really long time, stuck in a certain position, a certain way of viewing something or believing something. Um, and a lot of this can be unconscious. So in a way, like the more that we can be kind of more honest with what's actually going on and feeling more in the body rather than ruminating in thoughts, not that thoughts can't be used, but uh, 
often it is an expression of whatever energetic layer is surfacing in that moment, is at play in that moment. And the whole world, the view of others, will be colored by that. And therefore, it will constantly change. The beliefs will change. The truths at that time will change. What's meaningful will constantly change. So when all of that, when all of that collapses, then there's an absolute energetic equality to everything. The spiritual path isn't better or worse than the radical message and vice versa. Meditation isn't better or worse than not meditating. Every, all of that collapses, all of the ideas just collapses. The meaning in all of it dissolves. The path of any kind, the need for it just dissolves. It disappears. And then it can be seen that all of it is empty. All of it is just pure, unconditional love, absolutely free to appear in any way. And that's not a position that's taken. That's just what seems more clear. It's not like preferences don't arise. It's not like opinions don't arise. It's not like a, um, judgments can't arise, but they do really you lose their energetic meaning because it's not owned by anyone. But it can freely be used and expressed So this isn't a suppression again of any kind. This is an absolute freedom for everything. This is a freedom for the body to be how it is, fully human, fully expressive, fully silent. So then any way of being, any position, it just dissolves. There is no absolute reference point anymore. There is no authority anymore. There is no person in charge anymore. 
all hierarchies dissolve. The dream isn't better than no dream. No dream isn't better than the dream. All of that collapses. All of it is seen to be equal and perfect the way it is. And that doesn't mean that a free expression can't happen here. If suffering appears, something might be said, something might be done, that's not to diminish certain actions. That doesn't mean stop helping people. That doesn't mean stop giving advice. That doesn't mean stop acting on the genuine wants of the body. It seems more free to be the way it is. The character is more free to be the way it is. And if the person mimics this, then that's fine. But there is a potential that it can be misinterpreted as recklessness or not giving a shit or being really flippant. But that's not what's being described. This is describing the end of a self, of the ownership, of the doer, of the sense that feels like it's in control of everything, of itself and life. And without that Without that central location, then a certain way of being and acting just seems impossible. And this might apparently take some time as the remnants of the of the personal sense, it might take some apparent time for that to really dissolve, perhaps be worked through, perhaps be felt through, perhaps be expressed, released accepted. Rejected. All of it is really okay now. So when all of that dissolves, and there's a lot more, there's a lot less chains. Like the power in the personal narratives Because of habit, they can kind of keep running for a while. But eventually, it seems like they just lose their power. 
nothing is sticking to them anymore. They can't stick to anything anymore. But I must say this doesn't have that much to do with the thoughts. It has more to do with the allowance of the sensations, perhaps that have been suppressed when there was a person there trying to be a certain way, which is totally innocent. It can, you know, to a certain degree that happens that happens when the identity is there. So when the person is there, it is good to actively redirect the attention in the body. And it will feel like I'm doing that. But no one's actually doing that. The system is just miraculous and it can redirect its attention. And then when the sense of ownership dissolves, then there can still be a processing of the remnants of that stuff because it had a certain momentum and that kind of needs to run its course until it has no more energy behind it. And perhaps there can be more discomfort in the body because a lot of the belief systems that are being brought up, perhaps it's dissolving and it can be disorienting when all of the hope and meaning that was put onto that belief or way of being, when that dissolves, or is dissolving, it's just confusing for the system. And it is kind of like entering unknown territory for the body. Without these handholds anymore, without the sense of security in certain things, And when the body seems to really kind of neutralize and settle down, then nothing is off limits. Nothing is rejected anymore. Nothing needs to be accepted anymore. Sitting in silence and doing nothing seems to happen naturally on its own. There's just a joy in it. So in a way I can see why people try to mimic this, try to mimic the silence through meditation.
And in a way, there's nothing wrong with it. It can benefit the health of the body as well. But I would say without the right guidance and context to just jump into meditation, obviously it depends where you are, but it can be harmful as well. You know, the seeking can use meditation in so many different ways. So it's not that meditation or spiritual concepts or the radical message. It's not that any of that in particular is super dangerous or super beneficial. It just depends on how the seeker is using it and what the context is there in that moment, why it's being used. So that was my little spiel.